In this video, I'm going to go over Momosa Mouse Cursor, a new plugin that I created, or rather an old plugin that I actually found some time to finish. Uh, this plugin is pretty simple in terms of what it does, but it's got quite a lot of unique features packed in as well. So this plugin allows you to customize your mouse cursor by replacing the default cursor with a custom image based cursor instead. I know there's a few of these plugins already out there, however, none of them had everything that I wanted right out of the box, so I decided to create my own. Alright, so let's jump into the plugin manager and I'll show you how to set everything up. There's only five plugin parameters here, and I'll go over them one by one. First, we have enable by default. When this is on, your mouse cursor will be replaced as soon as your game starts up. If it's off, your normal mouse will be used instead, and you'll be able to turn this plugin on later on via plugin commands. Next, we have default cursor, battle cursor, and menu cursor. Each of these represent the default cursor image for each specific scene. Menu cursor, for example, will be the cursor that will be used in menus. Battle cursor will be the cursor that's used in battles. And default cursor is the cursor that will be used for everything else. Cursor presets allows you to define even more cursor types. You can list an unlimited amount of unique cursors here, and you'll be able to change through them anytime during gameplay with plugin commands. Okay, so to start, I'm going to leave enable by default set to on, and I'll just set up a default cursor for now. The battle cursor, menu cursor, and any presets cursors will be set up in the same way, but I'll cover those a little bit later. The first parameter we have when setting up a cursor is cursor name. The first parameter we have when setting up a cursor is cursor name. Now for default, menu, and battle cursors, this is a fixed value and is unchangeable. However, for cursor presets, this value will be very important, and I'll show you more on that later. The next parameter we have is cursor image, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's the image that will replace our mouse cursor. So for cursor image, I'm going to choose cursor. After that, we have cursor focal point. And for this, it's pretty simple to understand. If the tip of your cursor image is the top left, choose top left. If it's bottom right, choose bottom right. And if your cursor is some type of a reticle, you choose center. So if you take a look at our cursor image, you'll see that the tip of our cursor is in the top left position. So we're going to choose top left. And that is actually the default. And if you don't understand this one, that's okay. I'll elaborate a little bit more as I create different cursors. Finally, we have click cursor image. And this is another cursor image. But this cursor image will only be shown when the left mouse button is pressed. I am going to set my click image to cursor click and you can see it's a orange variation of the same mouse and I'm gonna leave everything else blank for right now I'll save the changes and run the game and cool as you can see our cursor has been replaced with our cursor image and when we left click you'll see our cursor image changes to our click cursor image. And if you hold it down, it'll stay. So I'll show off a couple plugin commands as well. But before that, I'll have to go to the plugin manager to set up a couple of things. While I'm here, I'm going to make a cursor preset. As you can see, cursor presets are set up in almost the exact same way as our default cursors are. The only difference here is that we actually need to specify a cursor name. And this is very important. I recommend naming your cursors something easy to remember. This one, I'm going to call reticle. And for my cursor image, I am going to choose cursor reticle. And again, our focal point, if we take a look at our cursor image, you'll see there is no point on any corner. 
And in fact, we would want our center to be the point of our cursor. So I'm going to choose center. And our click image, I am going to set to cursor reticle click. Okay, so I'm going to make a couple of events here. And they're just going to process some plugin commands. And this event is going to turn on and off our custom cursor plugin. So I'm going to choose Mimosa mouse cursor for our plugin name and for our command name, I'm going to set this to enable cursor. There are no arguments for this plugin command. And when we try to turn off our cursor, I'm going to set it to disable cursor. And again, no arguments for this command. The other event I'm going to set up is going to be to change our default cursor. So you'll see right here, we have set default cursor, set battle cursor, and set menu cursor. So you can change any of your cursors at any point during the game. So by default, the cursor name is set to default. And what that means is we're gonna revert our cursor back to what we specified in the plugin manager which I don't want so I'm going to change this to reticle because I want to use our new reticle cursor that we just made and I'm going to make a conditional branch here didn't mean to exit out okay so I'm gonna put my reticle cursor in the reticle choice and I am going to set default when we choose default cursor All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk to this guy and I will turn off the cursor. And you can see we just disabled our custom cursor. I have my default mouse cursor. Now, if I turn it back on, you can see we have a custom image again for our cursor. And I'll talk to this lady and I'm gonna choose reticle. Now, pay close attention to the focal point of this current cursor, which is top left, which would be the tip of our cursor. And if you'll notice when we switch to reticle, the focal point is now in the center. And I can talk to her again and restore the default image. And that's all there is for this plugin, at least this version of this plugin. I have two versions of the plugin available for download. The one you just seen is completely free to download and use in any project, non-commercial or commercial. The other version I have adds quite a bit more functionality. However, it is a paid plugin. It's priced at $1 and it's got a lot of pretty neat things. At least I think so. I'll give you a preview of what this paid version can do that the default one cannot. We have all the same parameters as the free version plus one additional parameter, and I'll show this off a bit later. Just like before, I'm going to start by setting up a default cursor. And when I open up the cursor parameter, you'll see we have four additional parameters for cursor setup. 
I'll go over these shortly. First, I'm going to choose my cursor image. And I'm going to choose cursor animated. And the focal point is still top left. Right here, the cursor is still top left. And also you'll notice that we have one, two, three, four, five, six frames of animation for this cursor, which is important because that is our next parameter here. So six animation frames and our animation speed. We'll set this to 48. And our click cursor image, I'm going to choose animated cursor click. And this one also has six frames of animation. And I'm going to slow this down a little bit. When we click, I'm going to choose 46. Now I'm also going to set up another cursor preset and I'm going to name this reticle as well. And for this one, I'm going to choose cursor reticle animated. And again, the cursor focal point, because it's a reticle, will be the center. And this one has, I believe, eight frames of animation. Let me check. Yeah, eight frames. And I'm going to set the animation speed to 50. Now, the maximum speed that you can set is 50. That's the fastest it'll go. And the minimum is 1, but I wouldn't recommend going below 40, honestly. It uh, looks a little weird with uh, slow animation. Okay, and for our click image, I'm going to choose cursor reticle animated clicked. Uh, the clicked is there, it's just you can't see it. And this one has four frames of animation. And I'm going to set this to 47. And for this final parameter, pixel precise pictures, I'm not going to cover this one yet. I'll go over it here in a little bit. I'm actually going to delete all this code in this event. And I am going to add a comment. And I'll press F1. And you'll see right here, Mimosa Mouse Cursor Plus. I'm going to scroll down until I get to event note. And you'll see here we have a note tag that we can use. And the description says, place this note in an event. And when you hover over said event in game, your cursor will change to cursor name. Replace cursor name with the name of a preset cursor. So I'm going to copy this. I'll paste it in here. And I'm going to name it critical. And you'll see once we're in game, we now have an animated version of our cursor. And please forgive me, it's not the best art in the world. I am not an artist, and this is just something I whipped up in a few minutes on pixel edit and you'll see when we click our cursor slows down a little bit and it changes to our clicked cursor image okay let's whoops let's jump into a new game here and when i hover over this event now because of that note tag that we placed our cursor now changes to our reticle and you'll see it animates as well. And when we click, uh, it animates too, but it's kind of a little weird. But that's not all there is to this plugin. I'm sure most of you are familiar with a plugin called Button Picture. It's added to every MZ project by default. It's a plugin that allows you to turn a picture into a button in your game. And Mimosa Mouse Cursor Plus can be used to extend the button picture plugin. I'll give you a quick example of what I mean. First, I'll add the button picture plugin.
All right, and you'll see down here we have a issue with our plugin order. Mimosa Mouse Cursor Plus must be ordered after button picture. So just move that down to below the button picture and apply. Save that. And then I'm going to go to this event and I'm going to edit it. I'll delete all of the code in here. And I'm going to show a picture. And yeah, why not? Then I'm going to add a plugin command. And this plugin command is going to be in regards to the button picture plugin. And I'll set that up and then I'll go edit this common event real quick. We have our button picture set up now. And I'm going to add one more plugin command to the end of this. And it's going to be from Mimosa Mouse Cursor Plus. And it's going to set picture cursor image. And we choose the picture ID here. And we choose a cursor. And whenever we hover over that picture with that picture ID, our cursor is going to change to whatever cursor we specify here. And I only have one preset cursor at the moment, so I'm going to set it to reticle, just like our event. And now, when we run our game, I'll go talk to this guy, and we have our picture here. And you'll see, whenever we hover over this picture, we have our cursor. And click the guy and there you go and now you might be thinking how exactly did this tie into the picture button plugin and why does the order of these two plugins matter well if you remember our new plugin parameter pixel precise pictures this parameter actually prevents you from activating any button picture when you click blank space on said picture. It also prevents the cursor from changing when hovering over blank space as well. So like all this blank space right here, this is all still part of the picture, but because I have that plugin parameter enabled, you'll see we don't actually change our cursor until we're on the actual picture and not in just blank space. So, I'll show you what I mean. I'll disable the pixel precise pictures parameter and I'll jump back to the game. And now when we hover over the picture, even though we're in blank space, you'll see that our cursor activates and when we click, we still get our uh, event to happen even though we're just clicking blank space. I've seen a few games made in MV and MZ that try to implement point and click elements into their project. However, I find it a little awkward when you have a little tiny button with a bunch of blank space and you get results like this. So that's why I added this feature. I feel like it adds a little bit more professionalism to enable this parameter as, I mean, that's kind of weird to be able to click all this just dead space that nothing is in and you still get a result. And that's all there is for this plugin. You can find links to both the free version and paid version in the description below. And for my patrons, you can download the paid version at no charge through Patreon. Thank you for watching and I hope you guys have an awesome day.